This is the best task management setup in Notion, and I'm gonna show you how to set it up right now. That's right, right now. Continuing with my building the Notion app system from scratch series, I do wanna point out that I actually just launched a new course on Skillshare, and that will become included with your purchase if you buy the Notion app system right now. It's called Mastering Notion, and it takes you through step-by-step -step the different levels of how to learn the software, and you will also have every single new module that I'll ever make when Notion creates updates and I make new updates on how to use things like automations on the course in the future. If you wanna check those links out, they're in the pinned comment and description down below. One note I will make uh, is that this is a series, so make sure you check out the playlist. And I did wanna make one appendage to this entire thing, which would be, if I'm type slash synced block here, what I would recommend is that you have your navigation within a synced block rather than it being a bunch of different views. So for example, all we need to do to make this fixed, if you start with the beginning of the series, is do copy and sync from the first page. And then you'll notice here, this was the old one, but we're gonna wanna make sure that we do it from the original page rather than it being the other way around. So I'm gonna go to settings, paste this in here. From there, in order to make this system have a task and project management setup, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this view section and we're going to essentially make some views here. So what I'd recommend you do is that you hold control and left click or command and left click onto these two projects and task sections. And then I would make a new template here. So what we're gonna call this one in my humble opinion is actions. We're going to give it a checkbox. And then after that, what we can do is we can do slash call to paste the nav bar and nestle it over, make it full width. And then we have the bare bones of what we're going to start doing. And then what you can do is take this task database. We're going to copy the link here. We're going to paste this out. Now we're going to hide this. We're then going to go back to this task database and let's work through a couple of the properties that are there. So what I would recommend that you do is you essentially set up your workspace with a couple different properties like the date property. However, I would call one of them time and then make another date property called due date so that you can differentiate when something is done. So the time it's done or the due date. Then make an assigned property. So that would be a person property that we call assigned to. And then for the tags, all I would do would mark it as ad hoc recurring or project, recurring, and maybe review and planning. It's kind of how I like to organize the different items here into like different sections of how I'm doing the work itself. Next, we're gonna make a select property that is gonna be a uh, for priority. And what this is gonna do is if we can make a high property, so we can mark this as red to give it a better indication. Another one as medium to mark that as in the middle, and then low and gray. So essentially what this can do is section off priorities based off your preference of, or what your thoughts on are when it needs to get done. And then we're gonna make a files and media property. And then a nice little URL, a status property for, I, I usually just do checkbox actually. I just always call it status out of force of habit from before they made the status property. And then we're actually gonna make a relation. So we can do slash relation and we're gonna pick this database. All right, so an easy way to make sure that you're actually picking the right database if you have a bunch of the same ones is that you can append the name. And if you go to the page and it's one of the recent pages, it should figure that out. Um, however, Notion's being buggy for me right now. So I'm gonna type this out and you can see right here, if I do task and then change this name to projects and then change this. So how we have the relation set up just as a point is that it needs to show on both databases. So this needs to be checked off and it's no limit. All right, so now we have the bare bones of the task database and we need the bare bones of the project database. And going over into the projects database, you can delete this tags property. And then we're gonna make a, a select property that's status. The only reason for this is because with Notion API, you still can't really use the status property much. And I just don't wanna deal with that. So we're gonna do not started, in progress, completed, and then an on hold property and an archived property. So on top of that, then we're gonna make it another date property, which is a project timeline and assigned to property. So assigned to, and then a project manager. So that's sort of a different thing than assigned to. And then files and media, and you can make a URL property. Now I'm gonna show you the structure page. And as shown earlier, um, you actually can have a context, second brain, bookmarks, meeting notes, all those sort of things set up. However, I do want to kind of work 
backwards into those uh, in a bit. And we're going to basically work on the task and project databases first before we like do a bunch of relations. So then if you also want, you can make another files and media one that's like a cover image. So if you wanted to make your uh, board view that we're going to make uh, be a little bit more fun, you can have it be the cover image. And then what we're going to do is actually take this property, go to show as and turn it into or sorry, hide property and turn it into always hide. You'll see why just in a couple minutes. So then if we go to this actions template, it's right here in this section, move this to the top. The action setup that we can make is first of all, if you want to make a default uh, icon, you can just change this into a checkbox right here, leave it untitled and then turn this into for all views. And then if you want to make a recurring task one, what you can do in my opinion would be you can do a sync option then pick a tag called recurring. Then we're gonna actually make a few more properties, which would be created time, created by, and then we're gonna hide these right here. All right, so lastly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a formula, which is gonna make recurring tasks a little bit uh, more easy to understand. So this is gonna be called the real date. So what the real date is, is it's going to be the following. If empty, then you do the property for time equals true, then you're gonna do created time, else you're gonna do the time property. Essentially what this is saying is if there is an empty time property, then it's gonna just show the created time. And the reason for that is currently in Notion, recurring tasks are essentially set up off of uh, when they were made rather than when they were created. Or sorry, rather than like what time you could set to it. So if you set it on a Monday, you can't like assign that date property, like the time to it. So that's unfortunate, but it just kind of is the situation. So what we're going to do is show you how you can make a recurring task setup that fits and, and kind of has your best interests. So first and foremost, we can hide this and then we're going to set this up, call it my tasks. First and foremost, what would be great is if we hit up the properties a little bit here and we set the filter to assign to contains me. All right. So then we're going to make an example task and I'm going to do it like this and hide some other properties here. And we're going to group it by priority. So I'm going to make a high task, a medium task and a low task here. And we're going to group it by priority. Awesome. So now I'm then going to hide this priority option and move the real date over here. And I'm going to set up some sorting so that it makes sense here. Um, once we also change a couple other things. So first of all, we can maybe hide this tags view, hide the files and media, the time here for input, and then the created time would sort of auto be put in here. Um, so it's not necessarily needed. And I would actually even maybe indicate it uh, farther down the line and have your checkbox right here. So this is where you can kind of edit the time if you wanted to change it from the created time to the real date of that. So I'm gonna make another couple tasks in each of these and show you essentially how this would work. This no priority section essentially will serve as a task inbox. The assigned to section can quickly change uh, when the uh, task assignment changes. Now you can hide this if you'd like. You can move around any of these properties in whatever order you like. Um, but I do think it's fair that you uh, kind of figure out what makes sense for you and don't just take the opinion of someone's someone on the internet. And then also one last thing about the uh, real date is that I'm actually gonna format this right here. So we're gonna do format date parentheses here. So this can set it so that it doesn't have like the minutes and stuff because I don't wanna have that. So I'm just gonna put this like this. I'm gonna snag this guy right here. I'm gonna change this to parentheses. So what I'm doing here is by making it set up like this, it does the exact same thing. Um, and I can put a format if I don't have a time associated to it. I just wanna show you how that works. Um, but in this circumstance, I actually can um, remove this format date if I wanna show what time it is. Um, even though created time is like a little weird like that. So we're gonna sort it by, first we're gonna do real date ascending. Then we're gonna do tags. Essentially how you're gonna make sure it's set up is that this recurring one is at the top. And then obviously either sort it by priority and nestle this in between the two or below. And mattering on the logic, you're gonna make sure that the grouping is put in the right order of high, medium, and low. So if, if there is no grouping, for example, if I duplicate this view, I change my tasks and then set it up so that there's no grouping and then change it so that it shows the property of priority. How this would sort is if it was a recurring task, it would pop up before a task that was not. So let me show you this. So right here, we have three properties or three items that are made at the same time. If I make this one ad hoc and this one recurring, the recurring one will go over it, even though the priority is the same. 
However, if I made it so that the high was more important, I could set it up like this. It's kind of your preference. I'm not really sure how your task prioritization would work. In my mind, a high task that was ad hoc would be more important than a medium recurring task. So then essentially how this could work is, for example, if you logged in and a recurring task that was an example would be, make another one of these and call it uh, weekly Monday reports. Monday reports. I created it to make sure that it was actually assigned to me. And then I did this. It would populate later than the real dates of the others that existed because the other ones were created earlier. So let's pretend that this is the new thing on the list and that there's a couple less tasks above it. If I wanted to make sure that this actually got done sooner, what I'd do is I could be like, all right, I'm actually gonna get this done on Monday and we're gonna make sure that this gets done earlier. Or if I set this one specifically to noon on Monday, you'd see that a task that has no time associated to it outside of just the date would be later. So this makes sure that in this task prioritization system, it always prioritizes the task with the earlier time. So you can always adjust it. And if not, it then prioritizes the priority of it and then how often it recurs. I personally think the grouping section does help a little bit clean up the view here. And so you can have sort of an inbox and also gives clarity of like, all right, let's say the Monday reports are pretty like medium priority every week. You can put that in there or maybe they're high priority. I'm not sure, but that's how I like to set up my task management here. You can also do this in a list property very easily. I'm going to duplicate this, turn this into a list and show a couple properties like real date, time next to it, have the checkbox. And then I actually think for me, at least the projects and the assigned to are pretty important just in case multiple people are assigned to the task itself. This would be an easy way to change the dates. And if you had a project associated to it, it'd be nice to see that as well. This is personally my favorite view for task management. So now that this setup is done, what we can do is we can make a new item here, call it actions from that template. And then we can change the sorting number to one and it would become a part of our navigation. Make sure to jump to the next module to learn how to do project management because with that module, you can actually learn how to connect the tasks with the projects and make a really nice setup. And make sure to stick around to check out this video right here.